Acadia National Park turns 100 years old today. To mark the centennial, we sent Good Day Maine's Jana Barnello and Adam Epstein down east. Yeah, they're live in Acadia this morning with special coverage. And guys, one of the park's biggest legacies is that it's preserved a piece of Maine's coast. Katie, Jeff, this is where the mountains meet the ocean. The views are spectacular, and the very prominent wealthy families that owned this land more than 100 years ago knew how special it was, and they wanted to preserve it, so they donated it to the federal government, and that's how Acadia became Acadia. And that preservation, it continues today. One of the park's main goals is still to protect the environment, and one part of the environment in particular that they're trying to protect are the wetlands, something neotropical migrant birds call home. So I set out to discover how our change in climate has impacted the warblers here on Mount Desert Island. This is Michael Good. He's on the ground every day showing people what we are at risk of losing. The park plays an amazing role and has for the last hundred years uh, in securing the kind of habitat that's necessary for neotropical migrants. That necessary habitat is often a wetland that can be found throughout Acadia. Well, for all these warblers that we're concerned about. Um, Adam, this, these, are the, these are vitally important. Biologists at Acadia National Park are concerned for the warblers as well. We do think some species are really going to be hurt, and part of that could be because of habitat changes. The sort of the niche that they really want isn't there. Using a method called pishing, Michael is able to make birds move and often come right to him. He's easily able to identify a bird based on its call. Uh, that's a goldfinch. Michael was on the search for warblers. Bright, colorful birds with beautiful song. So we have about 20 species of warblers that, that nest around here. It didn't take long before he succeeded. There he is right there, Mike, right here. Now you got to shoot. you got to be shooting right now. Do you have him? Yep. Okay, everybody be quiet. Try not to move too much. Mike. Michael made sure our photographer Mike did not miss our first warbler sighting of an American red start. Somebody's calling up here too. Here, right here, right, hurry. Yep, got him. Michael quickly identified the common yellow throat warbler, which calls wetlands home. Our photographer Mike also earned some praise. Here he is right here, you're, you're on him Michael, way to go. At this time of the year, the warblers are done migrating and are in the nesting period. They have an annual routine based on the weather and conditions they've come to know. If the season shifts earlier or later, the availability of resources shifts as well. Birds will arrive, start to do their nesting, go through breeding, and then go through laying eggs. And then when they expect the food, the food won't be there. The result of this possible scenario could be devastating. Some of them will move to different places. Some of them may just actually blink out. It's a frightening prospect to lose such beautiful creatures. Not only will bird watchers suffer, but Bruce expects a ripple effect that will reach out to the environment and our communities. And then we won't even realize it until we're in the middle of it. We get people here from all over the world. It was really a, an amazing experience to be out there with Mike and see those birds up close. They're truly beautiful. I've never done anything like it by f before. It was fun and it was educational. We learned so much and hopefully we can preserve those wetlands so those beautiful birds that sing so beautifully can stay here near Acadia. And so that three million people this summer can take a look at them themselves.